Over the past years, I have met dozens of people who couldn't master covert hypnosis, or at least thought it was way too complicated for them to integrate it into their life. Their profiles went from anything like coaching, they wanted to become a good hypnotherapist and NLP coach, to dating skills, finding the love of their life or getting a girlfriend, to sales, be handling objections, earning more money at their job, or simply they wanted to get you know more more charisma, more confidence whenever they were communicating with anyone around them. I see that as a duty to some extent to master those skills or kind of hypnotic abilities, because when you don't have that, when you have zero potential with influencing someone's thoughts, first of all, you will get ignored by people you want to earn respect from, people you want to communicate with, they may just not even listen to you at all, even when you have great things to say, when you have a great point to make uh, to improve the conversation, they may not even listen to you at all, you may not be able able to handle conflicts in your personal relationships with your friends, with your family, with your wife or husband, at work even less. You may have less of a good salary and for example one guy I helped in the very beginning uh, didn't really handle his relationships problems which was the reason he was uh, coming to me, at least he did not solve that right away, but he got a new position in a new job like a few weeks later where, where he was paid like three times his uh, last salary. And he told me this really happened because I developed much more confidence through mastering my language abilities, my influence abilities. I knew I could do it and therefore he approached a new uh, job interview with a level of confidence he had never had before. So those skills are definitely a duty in my opinion, uh, whatever is your life path right now, whatever you are. And once you really master that, first of all, you will realize how many people seem to think in less complicated levels than you, because you already figure out why do they say that? Why do they don't like that? Why do they have an objection about this thing you say when they uh, try to bully your, your points of views and they don't like what, uh, something you talk about, you will just realize there are so many deeper unconscious intentions behind that behavior they display that you will not even need to argue with them anymore because you can hypnotically cancel their aggressiveness or reluctance as a matter of fact, it becomes intuitive to know how to dec decrease people's emotional hot buttons and how to make them envision a more positive future for themselves. In the same way, you can play, once you master those skills, with your own inner talk to reframe all the things you talk, you tell yourself about, I am not competent enough for this job, uh, I can't find love because I'm not like this, I won't be able to X or Y because... Eh, all of those things will become more clear in your mind and you will be able to almost self-hypnotize yourself just through the way you talk to yourself because you will know the deeper intricacies of your own language and you will be able to motivate yourself, definitely get more productive in your life and more motivated because you will know how to trick yourself into firing off that motivation whenever you have something important to complete. So now, from my experience, what stops people from really mastering it, uh, the whole field of covert hypnosis, how to subliminally influence people's thoughts uh, and figuring out how, what to tell them so that they stop arguing with you. This is in big part due to the fear that it does not work. That may seem like overly simple, but usually people put too high expectations on themselves, like the guy I mentioned who wanted to get a girlfriend right away, but he, he had like zero skills with women in general, and he was trying to aim for like a top level model, like right off the bat. That's why it was too much pressure and when he talked to girls, he improved but he did not get what he was expecting because it was too, too high expectations. So those high expectations are causing a lot of fear and that fear causes pressure and like not knowing what to say anymore and then that turns into frustration. Oh, I'm such a piece of shit, I'm such a loser, uh, Bendler or whoever is so much better than I am. 
Yeah, 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 slow down. The whole point is overthinking. Overthinking, overintellectualizing, and on top of that, people overintellectualize the covert hypnosis stuff because when they are scared, they don't not sure they will be able to get this job, land this job interview, get this girlfriend, whatever. When they are scared about those things, then they try to consume more information maybe from my channel, maybe from books, maybe from whatever. They just try to consume, consume, consume more techniques, more because they think they need a new technique. Actually, no, they need to put into use what they already know and adapt based on the response they got. That's the learning process. But the natural way of numbing your own anxiety because you're scared it doesn't work, the natural way of numbing that anxiety is to consume more information because finding out some new techniques from me, from Bandler, from any, anyone is releasing dopamine. The relief, oh, so cool, something new. Yeah, but that is just a smoke screen. You still have the fear below that. And that fear will not be handled until you take action and actually put into use all the things you have learned so far. So now that we covered that, those main reasons why people get paralyzed sometimes, if you really want to simplify your learning and develop the ability to hypnotize anyone in the blink of an eye, just as you speak, I would say there are three central points, mainly, that you need to take care of and really figure out how to do that. The first one is natural pacing and leading, and that may seem overly simplistic, but so many people still don't apply it. Pacing and leading means first respecting the model of the world of the person you are interacting with. Of course, Johnny, I acknowledge that your life won't be able to change. You are definitely right. I agree. It is too difficult for you. You are only a victim. No one else has the keys. I definitely agree. Okay, pacing. Now I'm going to fuck up this mind, this shitty mindset once and for all. But I need first to acknowledge that their version of reality is the truth. Once I have done that, yes, I can go into leading to embedded commands that will get them moving, uh, get them more empowered about their lives. Yes, once there is rapport, not before. Otherwise, they will just dismiss and ignore all the things I said. The next point is the calibration skills. The, the second technique I really so people struggling with the calibration skills of um, the awareness of the nonverbal responses you're getting as you speak. This one requires the same thing to get out of your head, uh, same thing with the paralysis by too many, too much overthinking. Being able to accurately read somebody's nonverbal responses requires to completely get out of your own head. So handling the fear by accepting that no, you can't control the outcome. Yes, you may get rejections. Yes, that may happen. Despite that, I'm still going to do it. That will temper the fear and then you will be able to focus your attention more on the person you are interacting with. With that focused awareness in mind, you will be able to spot when their state is changing. Very easy chart. We have the responsiveness versus unresponsiveness chart. When they are head nodding a lot, when they, their eyebrows are rising whenever you say something, when they smile, when they get closer to you, when they have an overall open body posture, then you know what you say has meaning for them and is relevant for them. On the opposite, if their body or head is kind of turning away from you, their arms are kind of um, putting a distance between you and them or like a closing the gap, like a, putting a, like a wall between you and them, when their eyebrows or face are kind of thrown and lowered, then what you say is not connecting the dots. What you say at this point, they don't agree with or they don't like it. In that case, you need to question them. Instead of making a monologue for like 15 minutes, you question them. What do you think about that? Could you share some thoughts about this? If I was to ask you, what do you think about my idea? What, do you, what would you say? You question them, you receive information, and you keep adapting until they get back into responsiveness, non-verbally. Once they are non-verbally responsive, more responsive, then it is the time to 
uh, to lead their mind into a new realization, to give a more positive suggestion, to uh, close the deal if it is in sales, then it is the time, not before. And that nonverbal awareness, really people think they, they master that, they don't. They really, beginners, they don't have a clue about that. They think it is just, yeah, no, not really relevant. Motherfucker, that is the first thing you need to focus on. Being able to be aware of where the person is at that you are interacting with. No, it is not just when you will have time. It is right now you need to focus on that. Pick one nonverbal signal per day and focus in the streets when you walk around you. How many people display that thing? If you want to focus on people smiling or the eyebrows of frowning, spend one day while watching people around you, noticing how many people frown their eyebrows as they speak. Then it's going to become intuitive, you can move on to the next thing, and on and on. At some point, this will just become second nature, and you will notice when people agree with you or disagree from an unconscious level, which means your language will adapt itself without you having to think about it. That is where covert hypnosis becomes natural, a part of who you, a part of who you are. That won't happen without the mastery of nonverbal skills. And the third technique, the last one, to, uh, the, the third really uh, central point, is the clear understanding of the motives behind the outcome you have for this person. To make that <laughs> more clear, when you want the person to close the deal in sales, when you want the person to uh, move on in their life, if you are a coach, um, a, uh, like a career transition coach, if you want people to get to lose weight because you are a fitness coach, whatever it is, you first need to dig into the clear reasons that make those people benefit from not changing, from not doing what you want, because if they, if they keep not doing what you want, it means there is a benefit for them to not do it. And that is that has to be clarified from you. And then clarifying what specifically would be the motive of somebody who, who would be willing to do that. If I am a fitness coach and I want to propel somebody into finally losing weight because it's been 15 years, they have been overweight. If I want to motivate some th somebody to do that, I need to figure out from the people who have successfully lost weight despite being overweight and get back into a great physical shape, I need to figure out what was the motive of those people. How did that happen inside of their head? So I need to get interested and curious into human beings in general, have some culture about when people move forward in life, what happened into their body and mind for them to get there. And that will form in my head an intuition for Whenever I talk with that person who is overweight, what can I say to that person to make him or her motivated to finally get there? It won't happen just by random suggestions. Oh, and when you feel great about losing weight, that's more complicated. People who have successfully lost weight, for example, they did so because they have linked the uh, weight loss activity with something they loved, either because it was a martial art, either because it was a, a, new, a new style of a workout that they had never known before and now they love it, uh, or because they get a sense of community into the, the, the gym they go to. It has to be linked, from my experience, to something positive people love doing, and that's where weight loss happens automatically. That doesn't, that never works when the person is only pushing through pain in weight loss specifically. That's an example. I know if I want to make an overweight person lose weight, I need to link something with something they love doing. The activity of uh, uh, losing calories with something they, they love doing. From there, I know the direction in mind and I can use my uh, covert hypnosis abilities in that direction suggesting things like, what if you could find a natural way of being more compelled about the activities that make you more physical, that make you move um, more, more physically in your life? From all the things you have done so far, Johnny, for example, what have been the most compelling for you and what could be an activity where you have to spend more calories, you have to move more, and you know you won't be alone anymore in that activity, and you know you will be doing something you actually enjoy. And that may 
take some time to develop that if they have no clue about it. At least I know where I am going. And I know what that person needs from experience to get going. That will be completely different for, for uh, an entrepreneur who is who has experienced a burnout and now is recovering. Completely different strategy. That's not the same thing at all. That's not, nothing to do with a, a sense of community with losing weight. Nothing to do with that. It needs to be built from your own experience. When you have enough people experience, you can guide people's thoughts naturally because you have been modeling on what works. The whole process of hypnotizing people covertly will be emphasized, will be amplified by strengthening their imagination for what they don't think they can accomplish yet or what they think is impossible at this point. That is a simple exercise to even practice with a friend if you can find one to take something that one of you strongly believes is impossible and see which language patterns can you use to make them doubt that it is impossible. I know it is a controversial technique, but it is what politicians use every day with you when you listen to them. All of them, by the way, not just one part or the other, all of them. So it is very important to figure out how that works to also prevent being manipulated by others. You just challenge yourself into making people doubt that what they believe to be impossible is actually impossible. What if it was maybe not as impossible as you thought it was? That is a simple exercise that will require you to develop your imagination and to help others develop their imagination too. And the final stage with that is more the slide of mouth side when you can just do it without any mental process, without any induction, just rapid fire reframing um, through the language alone. That is kind of the more advanced step when you can just reframe on the spot without thinking. More advanced. Now, ultimately, when you completely master all of those skills, it will be part of your identity of who you are. And it's no longer something you have to think about because it is confusing. It will just come out of your mouth without thinking. In order for that though, to become part of your identity, I think there is a missing step. I think you need to clarify what are you or like who are you becoming through mastering this? What, who will you be that you are not today? If you say that you want to be able to hypnotize anyone covertly, cool. Who will you be once you became, once you have become able to do that? Who will you be that you're not right now? The more you can link that to an, an, an identity statement, the faster it will happen in your life. What else? will you be able to achieve once you master all of that? What else that you can't do right now will you become able to do once you master covert hypnosis or any kind of a hypnotic language patterns? What else will you be able to achieve? What else the person you will be then will be able to achieve that right now is completely impossible for you? Once that becomes more clear in your head, I can assure you, you will find much more motivation to practice, to develop those skills, to de de devote some t more time learning, because I know most of you guys say you don't have enough time, it is too complicated. Once it is linked with a real motivation of who are you becoming through doing that, all of those excuses are going to be out of your mind once and for all. Now, if you want to develop those skills with the first introduction that will show you step by step what to say in conversations where you used to be stuck, you have the seven steps to master slide of mouth down below that I think is a great introduction to better, ex to better figure out when the person has one objection or one limiting belief, how do you respond step by step? What do you say? so that they start to reevaluate their strong assumptions about, no, it is not imp it is impossible, I don't believe it. How can you slowly lead their mind so that they become more malleable, more open to what you say? That is down below, be my guest if you want to read it. And in any case, I say you good luck, I tell you good luck, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. <laughs>